Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a flat peyote square. I will also be showing you my method of doing three bead corners. So let's get started. I can see I've got eight delicate beads here. That's for rows one and two. And then I've chosen five other colors for each of the subsequent five rows. And that's because you will repeat these five rows, but not rows one and two. So we're going to pick up four of the delicate beads and I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot. Well, I'm actually going to work a circular fire line join because I don't want a tail. Uh, it's up to you. It depends what thread you're using. These first four beads are classed as row one. You can see here that the beads aren't sitting quite the way I want them to um, because I need to put a bead in between each of the beads on the next row. So what I do is I use my bead reamer. I'm just going to pop that in so that the beads sit this way. So row two is about stitching one bead between each of the beads of the previous row. So this is row two and this is why I say this, these two rows are not going to be repeated. The peyote square uses five rows a five row repeat, sorry. And we need to step up through the very first bead we added in this row. So the next row is row three and is the first row with the three bead corner. And I have seen this where you pick up three beads and you simply go through the next bead. So I'm going to show you what happens and why I don't do it this way. So I'm picking up three. I don't know whether you can see, but there's a little gap where there shouldn't be one. I'm going to pick up another three. I'll get a close up in a second. Right. These two beads here should be sat next to each other, but there's a tiny little gap. Now, if you leave that be, it means every subsequent round that you stitch will not sit quite right. 
So I'm going to take these out. You can do it this way and you can um, sit there and make sure these two beads sit adjacent. But what I found is it's a load of faff. It, it just takes so much time um, to get them to sit properly. So I decided an extra stitch, which is actually a square stitch, would work or might work. So I gave it a go and I've stuck with it ever since. So I'm going to take these three beads out and I'm going to show you what I do. So we're back to rows one and two completed. Now this time I'm going to do it my way. So I'm going to pick up two beads and I'm going to come back through this bead on row one in the direction shown. I know that sounds bonkers but it's fine. Now pop your thread between the two beads and come back through the bead, this bead in this direction. Now what that actually does is create a square stitch between those two adjacent beads. And that means it's not going to move. It's not gonna budge, it's not going anywhere. And then we pick up the third bead, come back through the corner bead. And there we are. It sits beautifully and this is guaranteed every time. Yes, it's an extra stitch, so there's four extra stitches on this particular row. Seems like a bit of a faff. Um, but when you get to a larger square, it's four stitches in what may be 50 stitches. So I think it's worth taking the time and it will always sit correctly, it won't move. So we're going to add the last bead in this round. And as we do in all peyote, you need to step up to the first bead that you added in this round. And that's three perfect corners. So then we move on to row four which is increase two each corner and peyote one each side.
So I'm going to peyote the last one on this side. And again, we're then going to step up through the first bead we added in this round. So row five is increased to each corner again. And peyote to each side. And as we add the last bead, and then we need to step up again through the first bead we added in this round. Row six is to stitch one bead each corner so that it sits between the increased beads of the previous row and then peyote three beads each side. and step up through the first bead that you added in this round. So the next row is row seven. And this is just to peyote four each side. So there's nothing doing on the corners. But watch this one. 
it will want to sit a bit silly. You need to encourage it to sit next, next to the adjacent bead. So this row is in effect the last row because you repeat in order to do the squares you simply repeat rows three to seven but for every row that you do, subsequent row that you do you will change the peyote count along the edges it's the corners that you have to remember the peyote edges to me well they just make sense they you just put peyote to the end of this side so they they will always increase um So the next row is a repeat of row three, which is basically the three bead corner, and which is why I will do it again in the red. So that's rows one to seven completed. And you can see here, we've got one, two, and then three, four, five, six, and seven. So we start again from row three. So we step up. And we're going to peyote along this entire edge. And then I'm going to complete three bead corner just as I did before so back through the white bead back through the second bead then adding the third bead. So the remaining part of this tutorial is simply a repeat and shows you how the sides increase in numbers. And so long as you maintain the corners of the five rows that you're repeating, I think the rest of it is self-explanatory. I will put in or I'll continue to film um, the next four rows as well. But if you're anything like me, um, you might have already got the, the pattern in your head. Or you'd rather, you know, whiz on a bit. Use the fast forward. It's just though um, I thought I'd do it. I'd do I would repeat the five rows for those of you that would wish to see it again, and to see how 
the increases happen along the edges. There's also something else I'd like to show you. So I'm putting in the last bead and then I'm going to step up. Now you can see what's happened here is that as I move into doing the next repeat of the row, my step up has moved. And that means that one of the beads is missing. This one right here. But we don't need to worry about it. We just continue around. And we will put that one in when we get to the end of the row. So we will put in the missing bead. And I think that's why if you know, when I'm showing you how to beat these shapes, if you're looking at a flat diagram, you don't always see what actually happens as you're working an object. And then you might lose your way and say, well, I can only get three in along this edge because of the step up and because the step up has moved. Because despite being this being a square, it is also circular peyote. You're going round and round in circles. And circular peyote will move. The step up will move. So long as you're aware of that, it doesn't have to be a panic button. And on a square like this, if you know that you've beaded, not on the first row, but the subsequent rows, if you know that you've beaded for uh, four beads each side and you started out with three, well, then you're missing one. So we just increase the last two on the corner here. And we're gonna pop in the bead that's missing. No biggie. There it goes. So it would be four each side. And so we can pop that one in. And step up. So on the next repeat, you can see I've moved again. And now there are two gaps. But you'll simply fill those in when you get to the end of the row.
so here we are at the end of row, well, the second repeat of row five. And I'm going to fill in the two beads that are missing. And step up. So now we're going to repeat row six, but we'll wind up peyoting um, six beads each side. One bead each corner. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm looking forward to making some more. The next one I do will be the Pentagon, which is my absolute favorite. Um, the triangle and the square are quite soft and malleable is the word I would use. Um, but I will also be making a video to discuss how and where you can use this to your advantage. Um, where you might need a little bit of help. Um, and that will be all about, will be a tutorial all about uh, flat sides, um, bases, and enjoying the curve of something. The triangles um, are lovely, um, but they do do their own thing and do so do squares and don't get me started on hexagons. So we'll have a discussion about that in a completely separate video, but for now this is just a flat square. That's my version of it. And I hope you've really enjoyed the tutorial. So this is the last repeat and it's a repeat of row seven. So we're just peyoting seven each side. You can see how, how as we've worked, the side numbers have increased, but the corners, the shaping of the corners are a repeat and remain the same. If you're interested in beading a trinket box that uses, that utilizes the flat peyote square, um, I do have one and it's called the Chinese Temple Lantern, um, which is a series of three stackable boxes, um, which I quite, quite enjoy because we put a, a little LED candle in each one of the boxes and it also has um, a lid as well. You can find um, the links to my both my shops, Etsy and my website um, in the description. So here we 
are nearly finished. Really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I can't wait to come back and show you how to do pentagons.